Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome to a new series I'm going to attempt to do called First Impressions. As you can see here, I have Sabayon Linux. I love to say the word Sabayon. I believe Sabayon is an Italian version of Gentoo. And you will see a common theme in my first impressions. They should all be Gentoo based distributions. So Sabayon is much like Gentoo in that you have a lot of choices of what you want to install except it does come pre-configured with a lot of decisions made for you. It's relatively easy to install based on a graphic um, installer. All the questions are there that you typically see in just about any other installer. It wasn't that difficult. It was easy to choose. The hardest thing I had was deciding whether or not I wanted to try out their KDE Mate, no, no, all the different flavors. You know, sometimes I wish that an installer just came in with everything so that you could try each one without having to install it manually afterwards. But I guess if you did that, you'd, you'd need a Blu-ray instead of a DVD. So, I looked at the Mate, and I thought the Mate at first was really drab to put it in any other turn just yeah it was drab so I decided I'd throw back on the KDE flavor and I was quite surprised it looked nice this is KDE 4.10.2 of course it had the exact problem that I had when I upgraded my regular Gen 2 partition to KDE 4.10.2 and that being of course that the bar down here was next to useless uh, it was it's just so transparent and the writing is so dim that you can't see anything. I have customized this one slightly. I left the Sebayon background on here so that it would advertise while I'm talking. I changed the background down here. It's still a little hard to see sometimes, but the you can see like the GUVC video is highlighted and you can read it quite well. Of course, it's typical KDE. You've got your advanced options here. Now, these are a couple of my favorites that I throw on there. Now, it came with Chromium instead of Firefox as the browser, but yeah, I decided I'd leave it, try it out. I'm not too familiar with Chromium, but it came right up and it looks real nice. And everything's nice here. And I did, of course, the little check for. Um, YouTube to see if video would work and of course I did a couple video tests and all the audio and video and multimedia seems to play really well here. Another thing I noticed is that it came default with Clementine and I'm not even sure if Amarok is on here considering that that is a native KDE built application it doesn't look like it's there so they've replaced Amarok with Clementine which, you know, I've kind of liked Clementine a little bit better. Of course, it comes standard with VLC and LibreOffice. Let's see. One thing that I was kind of um, having a brain fart when I first got this was how to... I know that the big thing about Sebillon is that you don't have to compile all the Gen 2 code to install, but it still uses the Gen 2 portage tree and the repositories for Gen 2. But in a lot of cases they've already pre-built the packages. Now what they use to, to install those is a program called Rigo Application Browser. And I found this once I started searching around and it does a pretty good job. You, know, you start typing in what you're looking for and it finds it such as say you want to play Tux Racer. I mean it should find Tux Racer pretty easily. And there it is, Extreme Tux Racer. Yeah, pretty much anything else that you want to find, it should be there. You know, another nice feature about Sebillon is you still have the great world of Gen 2 here. So, if you're familiar with eMerge, for instance, you can search the same thing for Tux Racer. And I love that dash S key because 
I can look for just about anything I'm searching for and it'll find it eventually. There it is. And so that's there. So that, those are two neat features. Everything seemed to work very well out of the box. I'm having a little bit of trouble with my graphics. I mean, it came, I believe, with the new Novu drivers. I have, for instance, on mine the NVIDIA uh, chipset for my graphics. And so when I've tried to play Tux Racer in some 3D heavy graphics, in some parts it seems to work really well and then it seems to get really choppy. And I've got a Core i7 processor and so I know my processor is good and strong. I know I don't have a lot of background applications going. But it kind of failed on those sort of tests, which I was really quite surprised. When I tested the same things within the last um, distribution that I was using last weekend, which was Debian's um, XFCE, the graphics worked flawlessly. I had no problems at all. But I also think that it was using the NVIDIA uh, drivers instead of the Novo video drivers. Outside of that, you know, everything else is pretty much the same down here. Um, one nice feature that I found, which, you know, in Gen 2, you always have to manually do your checks and your synchronizations, and at least I do. I've never really set up anything automated, but they use something called Magneto to check your um, updates and launch package manager, do the package um, updates yourself or disable the notifications altogether. I found that kind of easy. One thing that I did find that I kind of mistake on is after I installed it, I went ahead and told it to do an update, but I should have told it to check out the mirrors to find the best mirror for my location. I was only getting about 400, 500k per second on a lot of downloads and I sat there for a long time while it was uploading all this stuff not knowing that I had this choice. So one thing I found was that when you launch or check for updates and that sort of thing, if you launch the package manager, let me see if that takes me just to Ringo or if that takes me to the whole thing, and yeah, it does, maybe it's the updates, I apologize, pull this up here. Well, bugger, I'm not getting to that menu now. Don't you just love it when something doesn't work when you're doing your when you're doing your updates? Well, any which way. There was an option within here to set up the mirrors and make sure that things like that were working right. I'm still learning a lot of a little things about Sebayon. I mean, it seems to be pretty strong, um, very stable. I've not had too many problems at all with it. It did take me a little bit of time to find a few of the differences in the way that they set it up, but it's clean, it's crisp, it's pretty easy to use. And if you're familiar with KDE, then you're going to be familiar with all this sort of stuff here. And Sebion has a great uh, website with lots of uh, information. You know, their download section, their Gen2 documentation, all this stuff right here and it'll pull right up to their website and show you everything with a few simple searches I was able to pretty much find everything that I needed on them yeah, it seems to be a good alternative if you're afraid to jump right into Gen 2 and you're afraid of the command line interface because you know when you start out with uh, Gen 2 you pretty much throw in a simple minimalistic uh, install and when you're done you're left at a prompt and unless you're willing to read the handbook which is a lot of very good information that Gen 2 has uh, you're not going to get very much further than that but if you do read the handbook you can do just about anything it's uh, that's what I like about Gen 2 so much you know, I use it for my servers, I use it for my desktops I use it for multimedia because I can make it as robust or as minimalistic as I need it Anyway, that's a short uh, introduction to Sebayon. I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you uh, enjoyed it. And until the next distribution, then uh, you guys have a great day, and we'll chat with you later. If you have any uh, ideas for the first impressions, I don't want to go too in-depth on things. I just want to kind of tell you, yeah, it was good, no, it wasn't, etc., but uh, if you have any questions or ideas or anything like that, uh, feel free to, 
let me know in the comments below or send me a chat of something you'd like me to look at or uh, get a little bit further in depth with. We'll chat with you all later. Hope you have a great day. Good night, whenever you're watching it. Enjoy. Bye.